Hello, Lisa. How are you today? I'm good. How are you? I am excellent. It's great to be speaking with you. Thank you so much. I appreciate you having me on. Well, I know you've got the new book out, You Look Like That Girl. Can you tell the listeners a bit about the book? Yeah, so um, I started working as an actor when I was four years old, and so the book is about uh, my, my career for 18 years in Los Angeles, working on more than 40 movies and TV shows. And then what happened when I was 22 and I realized that I just really wasn't passionate about my work anymore. I, I, I wanted to try to do something else, something that maybe felt a little bit more authentic to me, sort of more what I was meant to be doing with my life. And so I left Los Angeles. Everybody kind of thought I was crazy, but I moved to Virginia and uh, started doing a little bit of uh, research into myself and, and trying to figure out who I was beneath the actor. Yeah, and you mentioned uh, retiring at 22, and it seems, though, like you had a lot of credits under your belt, you know, maybe more than uh, some actors might have in their entire careers. I was very lucky. I, I worked a lot, and I worked on some, some great projects with some great people, and um, I, I had a lot of fun for a lot of years. So was that all it was? Was maybe you just wanted to seek out other passions, or were you at all worried about maybe kind of falling into the trap that you hear about all these other childhood actors that, that kind of get into? So I never went into any of that stuff. I, I, I was never very good at drinking alcohol. I didn't like the way it tasted, so I just pretty much didn't do it. I never got into drugs. I never got into the kind of that, that dark stuff. But um, I, I really was kind of feeling trapped in my life. It was the only life I had ever known. Everybody builds up the film industry to, of course, be this dream life that, that everyone must want to do. And so it was really difficult to make that decision to, to leave just because I kind of changed my mind about what I wanted my job to be, which I think a lot of people can, can relate to. But for some reason, when it's about the film industry, it, it seems more complicated than it, it really is. Yeah, I do suppose most people probably think, you know, you're a big Hollywood actress and you have it made, but... You mentioned starting at four years old, so I'm sure you probably didn't really even know what you were signing up for then. No, I don't think I did. It was all uh, started because of a completely random encounter. I, I'm, I'm Canadian. I was with my parents in a farmer's market in Toronto, and uh, this guy came up to us, and, and he had uh, written a commercial. He wanted me to be in it, and so it, it sort of snowballed from there. My parents asked me if I wanted to audition for it, I was four, had no clue what it was, but yes, I wanted to do it, and uh, they sent me to a talent agent. I went out on more auditions, and, and then 18 years later, I kind of went, wait, hold on, what happened? <laughs> <laughs> it seems like you did have a lot of uh, guest spots on TV shows and stuff when you were younger. I noticed a lot of, um, I don't like a horror film, kind of sci-fi sort of stuff, like uh, Friday the 13th TV show and The Twilight Zone and that sort of stuff. I mean, was that weird as a kid? being uh, in, into those kind of projects? I've always been a little bit dark and a little bit morbid, so I think <laughs> I always loved that stuff. I especially always loved special effects. So if I could be, you know, covered in blood or something, I thought that was just the coolest thing ever. <laughs> and, you know, it, it gave me the chance to do really neat things like, you know, fly around around the room on those, uh, you know, on those apparatus that they, they use and, you know, cool stuff like that. So it was always, uh, it, it was always very interesting. Well, and of course, I have to ask you about uh, working on Mrs. Doubtfire. I mean, you have, as a kid, you're working with Robin Williams, and of course, uh, you know, James Bond is in the film, and all these uh, kind of iconic uh, actors, and that must have been pretty cool. It was a great shoot. We really all bonded incredibly well on that movie. It was uh, a difficult show to, to film. The, the hours were really long with Robin's makeup and all that sort of stuff, so it was wonderful to have such a, a, a supportive community. We really felt like a family, and, uh, and that, was, that was really special. Well, and of course, it was sad to hear uh, Robin Williams uh, passing away, and you hear all these stories from everybody about how much of an effect that he had on their lives. I assume you must be in the same boat. Yeah, absolutely. He really was an incredible person, and of course, everybody knows he was so talented, but, um, you know, he was just, kind of guy you wanted to sit next to at lunch. He he was not always on and crazy. He was just a really um, kind and generous individual that um, I'm, I'm so grateful I got the chance to know him. 
So with all these uh, credits that you did have under your belt, uh, would you say that was your favorite film? I know you were in Independence Day and Matinee and a lot of really big movies around that time. It's so funny. It's really hard to pick a favorite. It's kind of like picking a favorite child. You know, you, you love all of them in different ways, so it's, uh, it's really hard to choose one. But that, that one definitely has, uh, has a, a, a special place in my heart. Well, when you did eventually leave, was it difficult to make that transition out of the business, you know, being in it basically your entire life and then trying to kind of go into more of a normal life? It pretty much threw my entire life upside down. Yeah, yeah I did not know what I wanted to be doing. I, I, I knew that being an actor wasn't the right thing anymore, but I didn't know what the right thing was. I had not graduated from high school. I, I was too busy working to do that. So it's not like, you know, I had this great education that I could fall back on. So it was um, a, a really hard thing to do to try to figure out my place in the world. And it, 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 it took me a little while, but luckily I, I, I found writing and that's been, uh, that's been pretty great for me. Yeah, that is awesome that it's worked out. I, I assume most people see you in movies and uh, think it's a glamorous life and think you have it all figured out. But, you know, when you're at 22, you really probably don't know a whole lot of anything. You're just like everybody else. Yeah, that's absolutely true. And I think that that's one of the reasons that I wanted to publish this book, too, is because I do think that uh, we tend to, to build up actors to to be on some really weird level that uh, is just very unrealistic. And, and um, I, I wanted to talk more about the film industry in a realistic way, what it's really like on a day-to-day basis to, to be a, a working actor and living that life. And when it comes down to it, it's a job, just like everything else. So with that being said, do you ever see yourself going back to acting, and maybe if the right project came along, or are you uh, closing that chapter for good on your life? really happy being a retired actor. <laughs> I think that, uh, you know, I, I, I had a good experience. I'm glad that I can kind of have that be, be a closed chapter of my life. So I think I'm, uh, I'm, I'm excited about being a writer. Excellent. Yeah. Looking forward to the new book, You Look Like That Girl. And you mentioned uh, being a professional writer from here on out. So I assume you must have uh, something else coming up or maybe another project after this book. Yeah, I'm working on my second book, so I'm uh, I'm I'm very excited to uh, to get back to the uh, the writing part of being a writer after being uh, on the on the book tour, which has been amazing. But I kind of miss putting words on paper, so I'm looking forward to that. Excellent, and I assume the book is in uh, you know Barnes and Noble, Amazon. Is there a website maybe people could find out more information? Sure. You can check out youlooklikethatgirl.com. I have signed and personalized copies that are available there. And I also blog at lisajacob.net so people can catch up with me there. And then I have like all the Instagram if you need to see pictures of my dog, which of course everyone does. (laughs) So you can uh, find me on Facebook and Twitter too. Awesome. Well, again, Lisa, thanks so much for being on with me today. I enjoyed it. Thank you. I enjoyed it too. (laughs) All right. Have a good day. You too. All right. Bye-bye.